it is a truly befitting topic for discussing and inspiring students emerging trends and challenges in electronics and computing so we, as human beings we have moved to the digital layer and any change we want to make either in social impact or in technology or in terms of education or health it has to happen in computing and in the digital world so i would like to start by uh, you know dissecting the topic artificial intelligence a little bit you know artificial intelligence is interpreted in many ways but i think this is a new this is not a new term artificial intelligence has always existed anything which is intelligent but invisible and is operating without human awareness is artificial intelligence if there is a windmill which operates without human intervention it is able to study the wind patterns and operate on its own it is an artificially intelligent system so artificial intelligence is not limited just to software code or uh, you know digital data as such artificial intelligence is anything which operates intelligently on its own without human intervention so uh, what we as human beings want to do is we want to control a lot of systems we want to control a lot of um uh, operations which uh, human beings do we want computers and robots and machines to do it so that's when uh, we that's what experts have called as artificial intelligence so there is no big deal about artificial intelligence anything which operates without human inter in intervention but mimics human intelligence is called artificial intelligence so this has become old trend now artificial intelligence has boomed in the last 5 years so literally all of us are now aware of this so the ceo of nvidia jens uh, um, jensen huang he says so software eats used to eat hardware that is old today's trend is artificial intelligence is eating software so if you don't know artificial intelligence you are kind of outdated so let's talk about today you know how artificial intelligence can work with humans so basically we are uh, we want to talk about biomedical applications but let's get this straight what is artificial intelligence and what kind of partnership we want to have with uh, humans and artificial intelligence so they have five levels basically first level is no automation all uh, it is called level 0 and in level 0 all the control is with the algorithm or the software i'm sorry with humans and there is no intervention by software but at level 5 artificial intelligence is in complete control human beings have no job so no automation full human control is level 0 and full automation with no human control It, like for example a driver in a driverless car he is probably sleeping the car is driving on his own so level 5 is what people want to achieve in the next 3 to 4 years it's a long shot but we are somewhere between level 2 and level 3 we still need humans to work with artificial intelligence now artificial intelligence is considered a misnomer you know it is the same as machine learning artificial intelligence is not machine learning machine learning is a very small part of artificial intelligence probably all of you are studying machine learning in your engineering college or your uh, when you take up a job you are hired as an ai engineer or machine learning engineer so The, it is all complete statistics it is math but artificial intelligence is not just that it has got a lot to do with systems control it has got a lot to do with logic how you frame logic for example let's say a, a, a driverless car has to choose between a child and it has to choose between uh, an old man when it is driving who will it choose so during the covid uh, 19 pandemic we have the same problem whether to give vaccination to 65 plus or whether to give vaccination to people under 35 years who is more important so that is logic and today logic was considered was neglected so much today all the big companies are getting sued because they have failed in logic of applying ai they are not including uh, uh, small groups minorities We, uh, ai is making mistakes in recognizing people it is leaving out women it is leaving out the uh, the colored people there is lot of uh, religion barriers so ai is not just an algorithm which will make mathematical decisions it has to make human decisions 
and we will see why this is so important in healthcare because healthcare is not business of making money it is business of saving lives so you know i want to start with this amazing story it's the story of a, a, a greek god called prometheus what he did was he stole fire from the gods uh, in the ancient times fire was considered to be a very magical power and uh, there is a myth which says prometheus stole that and gave it to humans now artificial intelligence is doing exactly the same thing what it is doing is human beings have limited of uh, five senses they can only see so much they can only understand so much they can only feel so much it is giving extra senses to humans and humans are becoming superhumans they are they are developing vishwarupa like a god you can do anything with extra intelligence extra abilities so ai is giving this ability to doctors imagine what can happen if you give superhuman abilities to a doctor he can probably save a patient who will not survive he can do amazing magical surgeries because he can look through areas in the body which no human eye can see maybe he can get into the uh, microscope and the ai can see things which normal human by eye cannot or maybe we will make mistakes so artificial intelligence is uh, adding a lot of value in uh so adding uh, augmenting human intelligence human intelligence is only limited you know there is uh, we have barriers we have limits it is extending these barriers so we can achieve a lot more so it is like a powerful weapon now this is uh, professor ramesh askar i think a lot of people know ramesh askar he is uh, he did the kumbhathon in uh, nashik in 2015 it was a very high tech kumbha mela and he used ai he used uh, uh, cell phone technologies he used wearable technologies for the kumbha mela and uh, food uh, pu- uh, puja facilities uh, you know uh, stampede management managing queues for the bhakts you know um, showers uh, toilets uh, also places to live they built everything for the kumbha mela it was a very high tech kumbha mela the zero casualties very well managed stampedes so so professor raskar from mit media lab has created this three cross three chart he teaches this in uh, mit for the uh, ai in healthcare and augmented reality and virtual reality in healthcare course he teaches this so the reason i have this chart i'll come back to this chart again at the end of the presentation the reason i have this chart is most people don't know they want to start do a startup in healthcare they want to start a new venture they want to do uh, an engineering uh, final year project in healthcare they don't they want to do it in ai but they don't know what project to pick so one of the easiest ways to pick a project if you look at this chart the x axis says capture analyze interact the y axis says improve transform disrupt if you listen to uh, uh, prime minister modi speech uh he gave at the pan iit conference all the iits all over the world they attended this conference in december he has a similar formula for improving the economy so what do you mean by capture capture means medical sensor data uh for example your uh, e- your uh, your heart rate is uh, sensor data it is giving you how well your heart is performing your pulse it sh- talks about the blood flow the blood pressure uh you know how much blood pressure is there how stressed your body is then you have pat sensors uh, uh, on the skin so it will tell the temperature for covid they are using lot of sensors inside the nose they uh, they draw samples and they use some test you know like they use a slide test or they do test using a microscope whether this person is covid positive or not so this is capturing data and then you analyze that data you analyze whether this person has any infection or not or uh, if the heart rate is irregular does this person is he running into a heart failure is he is he developing heart disease so this is analyzing interacting means interacting with the medical device or the interface all these areas require medical innovation and ai can be used everywhere artificial intelligence can uh, help augment human intelligence in all of these departments so uh, let's look at what uh, professor raskar is doing 
he is uh, he is working on motion tracking for example you are sitting in this room and you are performing surgery in another room so you are moving a robotic arm here and that robot is going inside your uh, small intestine so if if you have to do that properly you need to track motion and uh, motion tracking is done by computational photography you get an image and you analyze how the um uh, surgical instrument is moving inside the body or the camera is moving inside the body there may be darkness inside the uh, cord so this camera will uh, create artificial image of the uh, you know what's happening inside your small intestine it can uh, uh, create an infrared image of the small intestine if if uh, real light is not available it can use radio waves so this is the power of artificial intelligence when you are able to capture data from different sensors and create very meaningful information for the doctor the doctor knows if i make this incision this person may develop may go into coma or this person may have become unconscious the heart rate is uh, reducing the blood pressure is falling i am not going to make this incision i am not going to remove this tumor i am going to stop the surgery now uh, and i will go and consult a specialist so artificial intelligence is speaking to the doctor using different uh you know interfaces that is the interaction part if you are a biomedical engineer or biomedical scientist and mba who wants to go and start a company in medical devices these are all this is a three cross three chart you have nine different areas to uh, explore i will tell you the top five trends in 2020 and 2021 where uh, investors from silicon valley and all over the world they have invested a lot of money and you can uh, based on that and you can combine it with this chart you can come up with new ideas as an exercise in you know yashantra chawan innovation and uh, incubation centers uh, or your biomedical engineering college you can choose your final year project now the first trend where artificial intelligence it is super hot the, the these startups are are getting several 30 40 million dollar funding in silicon valley what do these startups do so the, from mit and stanford these you know md phd's and uh, you know these ai engineers uh, who finished machine learning certification they are making this mri and ct scans available uh, very quickly mri and ct scan processing is expensive it is very very cumbersome so they are making it quick usually mri and ct scan takes a few uh, minutes Uh, and it costs certain money they are doing this scan super quick and not just uh, uh, you know um, so for example a standard scan takes 4 minutes per bed this is taking 1 uh, minute or lesser so that is because artificial intelligence is extracting extra information from each second in the scan every second there is a scan uh, the machine is able to do let's say 50% ai is doing 50% more so 4 minutes is reduced to 1 minute if you get do a mri scan the last mri scan where i went as a volunteer 45 minutes of uh, you know you need to spend inside the scanner it's a very noisy experience getting into an mri scanner is the most scariest experience because there is a magnet and it keeps scanning your head and it makes very loud noise and if you go through that experience you may come out and you may uh, puke you may vomit because it makes you very giddy whatever you eat it you just throw up so if that scan using artificial intelligence made less than 5 minutes it is very very convenient for patients especially if the patients are 80 plus 90 plus or if they have some sort of heart uh, heart pacemaker or device all these things will really make a world of difference so artificial intelligence is reducing the time taken for diagnostics especially mri more than ct mri it is adding a lot of value ct scan the problem is there is radiation there is x ray x ray is harmful it can cause cancer so if you reduce the ct scan time it uh, you, you know women who are pregnant or babies or children for them it is very useful now this is the trend of healthcare investment post covid look at the number of investments it is Uh, it is just shot up in the last 5 years maximum healthcare startups people are pouring millions of dollars into healthcare startups and in that ai startups are number one you can have medical device startups you can have drug startups you can have so many startups 
but the number one investment is going in ai in healthcare so it is a top business trend uh, i know you come to college to gain knowledge but you also want to make a living you can always join a startup as an ai engineer and you will always have a secure job so covid 19 you know the biggest challenge is you can build great technology for 10 people can you build it for 10000 people can you build it for 1 million people you know so that is the challenge which only ai can do because ai is scalable ai is light it can get on your phone and ai does not require maintenance once the software is deployed it learns it is self learning so learning uh, you know they they have uh, reached new heights their self supervised learning they also have uh, you know learning where the machine is observing the human and learning from the human from the doctor from the nurse so uh, this is very very scalable anything any solution which is scalable and affordable it is a very big business opportunity now the second hot trend is in at home testing so we all grew up at a time where we would go to the hospital we would get an appointment for the lab we would give our blood or urine sample and then we would wait for two days for the results to come today the trend one of the hot trends is they will, uh, there is a very cheap kit they will send to your house you can do the test in your own house and if you are not sure of the results you can upload the result on the phone and send it to the doctor in the clinic even though it may not be very accurate the clinic clinician will have a software which will see the images sent and they'll diagnose exactly what infection you have during covid time this is very very useful especially if you have uh, somebody who is in quarantine and they need to send a blood sample or if you have a really old parents at home you don't want to expose them to hospital environment you just order a kit it will come home put your sample in and you can ship it you don't even have to or you can drop it off in a contactless uh, drop off uh, uh, box this facility is not very popular all over the world but that's exactly what startups are doing this is their job anything which is so new which is so uh, cool which is so useful they they are making it available to everybody at an affordable price that is why it's very important to support startups and research in this area now uh, that is uh, second trend third trend is analyzing slides using ai because if you hire a lab technician and during covid you have so many patients in the hospital if they make one small error that person is positive or negative you know or they may, they may uh, administer the wrong dose they may give wrong treatment but a machine will never make mistake it repeats the same task again and again and with ai they have mastered this pattern recognition all the uh, uh, you know if you ever look at a uh, blood sample if how it is labeled they go cell by cell they count the cells on a slide it's a very very laborious task they count number of cells in the slide and how many of them have disease how many of them don't have disease then they say okay this person has cancer so if this can be done by ai algorithm nothing like it you're saving lot of man hours and uh, nowadays they uh, have they send the slides home you can prick you can pour the blood this is ai and digital slide sample and you can click a picture and send it to the hospital so this is a really cool trend it is reducing human error now trend number 4 there is one more trend i will talk and then i will summarize uh, the talk after that so you know drugs the pharma industries they are one of the slowest industries in the world this uh, uh, you know paracetamol there is uh, uh, there is there are there are a lot of drugs which are not good we still take them they have a lot of side effects our uh, Indi- indian medicine uh, you know homeopathy or ayurveda they don't recommend these because they kill good cells they cause side effects uh, yeah. so any chemical which is not uh blending with our body it's not good for us and antibiotics do that they kill good cells they kill immunity so drug that's because drug discovery is so slow uh we are using the same drugs they used in 1930 for um, malaria the same drug we are using now whatever they used for uh, pandemic in 1920s even now we are using the same thing because drug discovery takes 15 to 20 years if you find something new by the time you start a company with that you become old 
uh, so it is 20 year business ai has shortened this cycle now this is the power of ai several billion dollars or several crores of rupees is saved because ai will not let you go and try the wrong uh, drug combination on the wrong drug target it will identify that in a computer simulation and it says hey if you invest 2 million dollars in this drug this is going to fail this is a failed trial why don't you try this combination and why don't you try this is this combination of individuals that will do simulation and it will tell you so uh in google there was this amazing uh, uh di discovery in protein folding protein folding is one of the toughest uh, uh you know problems to crack how will a protein express itself several decades together uh genetic scientists have not been able to solve this puzzle artificial intelligence solved that once you solve that drug discovery time is completely short so you can bring you know companies like biocon you know kiran mazumdar she is uh, uh, rolling out vaccines for covid they can do it very quickly johnson and johnson or bayer or merck their their uh, business cycle is shortened their expenses are reduced so artificial intelligence is a pretty hot trend because it's very good in reading patterns now one of the last trends which is still picking up is how do you improve the doctor the nurse and the patient's life inside a hospital because uh, doctors and surgeons they are very very busy people and they do a lot of work which is not uh, supposed to be done by them like making notes patients taking patients history all these things are uh, very mechanical for them and after that they have to enter that in a computer and then they have to diagnose the patient they have to follow up with the patient they have to prescribe medicine then they have to run to surgery then they have to read the lab reports so what ai is doing is it's making this doctors patients technicians life very very easy how is it doing the ai itself will monitor how the patient is doing if anything goes wrong only then it will give some red signal or blue signal to the nurse or the doctor they can be doing something else and when they get these signals uh they will they will go and check on the patient they don't have to do rounds regularly uh also there is this uh, computer vision technology in mit they're using where the camera itself will tell whether this person is following social distancing in hospital or not if a particular doctor is not wearing mask not washing hands then the artificial intelligence system will warn don't uh, recommend this doctor he is not following social distancing he is not good for the patients it will send a warning signal so this is called remote monitoring now if you have very old people and uh, you know you have you have you have to take care of them at home but you can't be next to them all the time there is this remote monitoring camera system which will send you a warning if that old person has fallen down or it's got hurt so this is the power of remote monitoring in uh, medical applications it will warn the nurse and the doctor and say hey this old person is not uh, sounding okay why don't you go give him a visit so they'll go visit uh, check his vital stats and say uh, uh, okay we need to administer some medicine he doesn't seem to be all right this is all happening remotely now let's say a doctor in usa wants to treat somebody in a village in uh, india there also this is remote monitoring can help it is called telehealth telehealth is one way one term but remote monitoring is monitoring 24/7 you are monitoring all the time now um hospital monitoring telemedicine is one one more thing which is uh, coming up is during surgery the doctor will get uh, you know artificial intelligence suggestions so the ai system will look at the surgery videos and it will starts recommending instead of uh, uh, doing an incision on the right side why don't you make an incision under the blood vessel this surgery is going to be better this this kind of surgery was performed in this particular hospital it was successful you can also perform so these suggestions start uh, uh, coming to the doctor during the surgery so i just want to uh, you know i'm almost done here it's one of the last slides so this is an example of uh, this is an example of how you can build various libraries you can build a library of uh, all the information of how cells behave then it, it i think it's called a genome and then phenome phenome is uh, how the physical characteristics comes 
come from your uh, genetic characteristics then uh, there is physio how uh, all the knowledge related to physiology of the body it it goes into a library it's called physio another thing uh, another library is called anatom all the anatomical structures how they are placed during surgery it's very important you cannot see inside some organs when you have an artificial intelligence visual interface which is guiding you how the body looks like surgery uh, will become much more easier so these are all knowledge bases which artificial intelligence can use and it can make your medical surgeries medical procedures much easier so there's another thing which uh, a remote monitoring does it in in a intensive care unit or emergency medicine this camera can uh, Uh, you know tell you how you can save a patient's life in lesser time let's say you take 10 minutes to do cpr it will monitor and it will say you don't need to do this particular procedure do something else this person is going to be saved you can save 30 seconds because emergency medicine you are not able to think the person is dying you have to give immediate care if a ai system is studying it has more knowledge about the situation you can save the patient's life quickly you can have a better rate of success so there is one thing which most of uh, the large companies they are getting lot of uh, into litigation is privacy they are saying that google or facebook they, they are selling data they are not being loyal to their customers so federated learning is a new kind of ai algorithm which protects the data of the customer or the consumer so what it essentially does is it will not uh, it will not use your data at all it will do the processing on your device on your phone itself and it will send the insights to google so google will never know where you were with whom you were what you were doing at what time it will not try to sell you ads it will not try to sell your information to any big company and make money off of you all it will do is it will just process information on your phone leave your information on the phone it will it will encrypt it so nobody can understand that information and it will send the learnings of that to the google research center then google will process and it will send you the uh, particular uh, application uh, you know which you are using let's say you are looking for a location then it will send you the location information but it will never know where you are even though you are looking for uh, let's say a restaurant it will never know that you are in a particular location still it will send you the restaurant recommendation Uh, and it will uh, it, uh, it will know the coordinates but it will not know it's yours so federated learning is is a particular way of making your data cryptic so the so your uh, nobody can exploit your data this is very very big in financial payments you know uh, companies like paypal or um, in india i think you have paytm for them this they spend crores and crores of rupees protecting the privacy of individual because if there is a multi millionaire who is invested money he is doing a several lakh worth of transaction he wants to be double sure that nobody is tracking his data so even in health data this is becoming very very important uh, for example if you have to run for the president of united states they are going to they first going to check your health records and if you want to keep certain information private then your privacy algorithm is the first thing which will come uh, into use you don't want to share certain information then if your algorithm is not solid then easily people can hack into your information so this is how it is deployed in community hospitals research medical centers cancer treatment centers all the processing is happening on the edge device it is called edge computing and only the insights will be sent to the google or facebook or microsoft or whatever so you is federated learning is is one of the most sought after privacy algorithms in artificial intelligence now so the next frontier of cutting edge research in ai is how ai will work with humans i think uh, um, we know that humans are creative we have a lot of empathy we are kind we we have values artificial intelligence does not have so if you are building next generation technology you are amazing students teachers faculty members here then you want to make sure that the ai understands human empathy whatever you build uh, uh, it is recommended you consider human wellness and well being in the end so again i want to summarize here with professor raskar's chart if you want to come up with a startup idea he has this chart 
uh, basically what you do is uh, capture analyze interact this is this is the coordinates you know you want to capture what data heart rate you want to analyze heart rate you want to interact with your heart rate monitor what are all the startup opportunities here in ai so you can think like that so this is called trend stacking and you you compare your notes with the top uh, uh, investors and the top research institutions when you put all these together you can generate a lot of good medical device startup ideas so with that i just want to um, conclude this is a book i am writing uh, with an investor in silicon valley he has invested a lot of money in india in uh, a b2b enterprise software he has also done a lot of non profit work in uh, education and he has many telehealth initiatives telehealth means uh, people in uh, small towns and villages they can get uh, advice from uh, doctors in bigger hospitals in in uh, other countries uh, they can get advice on surgery so this tele he has invested a lot of money in telehealth he is also a st uh, a st done his own startups in silicon valley and uh, all and he's funding many hardware startups in uh, bangalore and mumbai and uh, he, uh, other places so this is an upcoming book if you want to learn more about me you can use uh, this link to learn more uh, bit.ly/vidabio here i have links to all my talks you can book a workshop with me i think i did uh, i think i did uh, two workshop series with uh, shashikant shinde sir and his team for the innovation group i did that so i'm i'm certainly available to do talks and uh, more so yeah with that i'd like to conclude the talk i hope uh, many of you will go ahead and do amazing things in healthcare and ai thank you very much for this opportunity if you have any questions that is great otherwise i'd like to take your leave thank you so much for the opportunity